What's the difference between taking the exam and somebody passing at 75 questions versus somebody taking the exam and passing at 145 questions? Or what's the difference between someone not passing at 75 questions and not passing at 145 questions, right? And so right now, at the time of me doing this video, right, um, we're still in the era where the NCLEX is 145 questions, right? Before in the past, it used to be 265 as far as the max. So it may change later, right? So if it changes later, right, the time of me shooting this video, then just see it as the maximum number of questions as far as the comparison for the sake of this video, right? So we'll talk all about that in today's video. So before we move on, one thing I want to mention is that, um, you know, it's really important to be able to stay awake, stay alert, right? And sometimes you want to do that without the crash and the burn that comes with like coffee and other things. So I want to recommend to you our energy shots here. These are all totally natural ingredients, okay? And it also contains like B6, B12. It contains, it does have caffeine in it, so it's going to wake you right up. And it comes in both grape as well as orange. So these are our energy shots. Just click the link below this video and use the code um, that's included below the video and you'll be able to get it at a special deal. You'll get a full pack and this really lasts honestly for like a long time and it's, it tastes excellent. So let's go right into it and let's talk about what is the difference between the two, what you need to know um, and what it really means. And this is probably going to be the most relevant to you when you're taking the test. Um, and then when you, as soon as you finish, as, when you take, when you take the test and once you complete the test and you're like in that waiting period. So let's kind of go over into it. So first and foremost, let me tell you right now that um, when you take the test and let's say as you're like, like literally you're at the test center, you're taking the test. Um you don't know right until you get the pass or fail results the number of questions that you get doesn't mean anything until you get your results okay so meaning that like don't find yourself taking the test and then you're taking the test and like oh my gosh you get all the way to the end and you start or you're let's say you're at question 90 like oh my gosh i'm failing it doesn't mean that at all so if somebody can pass with 145 questions and somebody can fail with 145 questions. Somebody can pass with 75 questions and somebody could fail with 75 questions. So pretty much until you get the actual results, the number of questions that you get as you're taking the test does not dictate whether or not you passed. But once you get your results though, it will tell you how you actually did. So let me go into what depth what I mean by this. So let's first talk about passing, all right? Let's first talk about passing. So if you get 75 questions on the test and you get your results, so when you get your results and you, and you passed, that's really good. That means that essentially like you did so well that the, that the test determined that you showed the minimum number, the minimum competency to pass the exam at an early stage. That's what it means. That means literally, because the test has to give at least 75 questions. That means that you showed competency very early into the test, all through the test in order to pass the exam, right? So if you pass 75 questions, that, that's really good. If you get all the way to 145 questions, okay, and you pass the exam, great. What that essentially means too, it, whether, I, and either way, either one gives you a license, right? What that essentially means too is that the exam it needed to give you more questions in order to see how if you would meet the competency enough so you needed all so the test determined that you needed you, we needed to give you all the questions to determine if you showed the minimum competency to get your license so essentially when you're getting all the way to the 145 questions this it's really like a bar like a graph and how they grade you and if um, the majority of your answers was above the minimum competency line, you passed the exam. And so, like I said, it just needed, the, the test needed to 
distribute the, the maximum number of questions to determine that you show that minimum competency. That's why you don't want to start panicking because you're at question 100, right? You don't want to start freaking out. You want to keep doing as well in your thought process, in your belief, in your mindset as you're taking the test all the way until you finish, right? You can't afford to start sweating at like 112 questions and then you just start guessing all the way through. Don't do that. Just do do as good as you were doing at the beginning as you were doing towards the end. Now, let's talk about it though if you get if and you if you get those results and you fail the test. So, if you get say five questions, right? And I'm going to try and be as delicate with my words as possible. But if you get say five questions and you don't pass your exam, that it that means you you scored the poorest to be honest this means you score the poorest because what it essentially says is that early on very quickly the test realized that you do not demonstrate enough competency to pass the exam to, to be licensed early on and it passed and it it just got to the minimum amount and it said okay we're going to stop it here because you showed that you the all the questions prior to these 75 questions were like you know bad you weren't performing well so if you so typically a lot of times when people um get certified questions and don't pass they perform not only do they perform really bad but they usually got at least two to three or more below passing areas so many times that's why it's so important that you make sure you get the results in the mail but many times they got at least two to three below passing areas on the test and so it just what that essentially means, if you got certified questions and you didn't pass, you honestly need to study your content. Like you need to, and you may feel like, oh no, I study content, I study content. But there may be a level that, there may be a level that you didn't study up to that's not enough. Um, and there also may be some, it's nice to, it may just be certain prerequisites that you have not fulfilled, which is why you're getting the results that you're getting. So meaning that, for example, you don't under, you don't have your medical terminology down. You don't have your pathophysiology down. You don't have your anatomy down, right? So you're learning all this content, 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 but you have not created the right connections that is sufficient to do well on the test. So sometimes it just goes back to the basics. I had I've had students before where like I remember I had one person. Um, I think her name uh, it was so while it was a while ago, but her name was Shane. Um, and oh no, Sean and it was, which is a it was a woman, and so she had taken the test like five times before we met, and her problem. Well, I need some water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Her problem was that she felt like she knew the content, but she didn't know the basics. So after she she took advantage of our assessment program, actually, the, you can learn more about it below. She learned the basics, got into her, her path of physiology, which is what she was missing, and she passed her exam. So sometimes it's really just like, there's like a missing piece to the puzzle that you have not acquired yet. And that's why no matter how much effort you're putting in, it's, you're not getting the results that you desire because you're still missing that piece. All right, you're still missing that piece. So that's one thing. Now, if you get 105, 145 questions and don't pass your exam, then you were close, you know. It means you were close, like, but it wasn't enough. That's actually what it means. So most people that get 145 questions, they get near passing in almost all the areas. Majority of the areas, most of the areas, those are usually people that get near passing. I'm sorry, that get 145 questions and don't pass. So what that means is that don't completely change how you studied for the test. So what people do wrong, they get so discouraged, they don't get the results and they change, oh, I did content or I did this the last time, so let me completely change the strategy. No, don't completely change what you did before. What it means, what you should do, if anything, is do that same thing again, or but more. And then also do more, um, add more critical thinking strategies and more questions. That's what it means. Because you were close, but it wasn't, it was like close but not cigar, cigar right? Like you needed more strategies, you needed more critical thinking and then that would have put you over the hump to get the license. So these are so the strategies, the techniques for one is different for the other. I say the page attention to why you didn't pass and your results and et cetera. 
and you'll see you'll you're more likely to see the results but what i see over and over again with a lot of students is that they completely change what they did and then they just they get further behind each time they take the test more more and more and more again so um and then also another thing too is that if you are trying to really pass your NCLEX exam and you've been struggling um you know you don't know what you're doing wrong or maybe you it's your first time taking it but really this is really for people who, who feel discouraged about the test or just need to get some clarity as far as if they're ready or they need to know what they need to focus on then you want to take advantage of our NCLEX assessment program this program what I did, this is not like any other program that you're gonna find anywhere, right? So because you could take a practice test, you could take a practice questions anywhere, and then the two questions are gonna tell you generally what you got right and wrong. So this goes beyond this. Not only does it tell you what you got right and wrong, but in the program, I actually help you to understand what you're missing, what your weaknesses are, what your weak areas are, and what you should focus on moving forward as well as how to create a plan so that way you can be more effective with your approach with the NCLEX. If this sounds like something that you really want to be a part of or that you really feel like you really need, then go ahead and click right now and take advantage of the program. Go to the link on the screen, bit.ly right slash assess package 90 or click the link that is mentioned right now on the screen and you can take advantage of it today and you get immediate access and like i said inside the program i go over in depth i talk to you you'll you'll have an understanding like as far as in the program i i talk to you in the program through the video trainings and help you to understand what you need to know, what you need to understand, really just kind of guide you. And you'll, you'll just, we've had so many people that shared how, how the program was very eye-opening and just gave them a lot of insight as far as what they're missing and what they need to do differently. So if that sounds like something you want to take advantage of, then make sure you click right now below this video to take advantage of it, either above or below, to take advantage of the program. All right, so learn more below about, learn more about our courses below. Take advantage of it today. And like I said, if you found this helpful, hit the like, subscribe, and follow, and share this video so that other people can learn this information as well. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you the next time.